Have you ever wanted to be a detective, digging into clues and pursuing every angle to solve the case? It must be exciting to eliminate possible suspects and find the culprit. Well, Watson, just call me Sherlock and grab your magnifying glass. My wireless network is having problems and needs help. Come along for the ride, it'll be excellent. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explore several troubleshooting options to get my wireless network back on track and you will too. I'll start with verifying some physical and environmental conditions. First, I'll check. Is all the equipment turned on? That includes the access point, mesh extender, and any other device which is present in the Cisco Business Wireless. Is the link light glowing consistently? If it's green, that's a good sign. Are the cables connected correctly? Check the cable connectivity. Am I facing a local area network connectivity issue? I'll need to check if the cable is properly connected. Could it be a bad cable? Am I facing a speed and duplex negotiation issue? You should check the cable. That may be the issue. Is the equipment overheating? If the access point or mesh extender is not performing properly, it can be caused by the overheating of the device. Make sure your devices are kept in a controlled temperature and work fine. Could it be an environmental factor, such as where it's located? Are the devices located near any other wireless or other devices which may be causing interference within the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network? We need to consider those factors as well. Are there any metal or thick walls between the access point and the wireless device? This can disrupt the wireless signal by weakening the signal. If the client is completely unable to connect, maybe it's due to the client being out of range. If the wireless client is out of the AP's coverage area, it won't connect since the client may be trying to connect to a specific AP. Next, I'll log into Cisco Business Wireless Access Point and see what other troubleshooting we can perform. Click Login to log into the Cisco Business Wireless Access Point. Enter the username and password. Click Sign In to log into the Cisco Business Wireless Network. Once I log into the Cisco Business Wireless Primary AP, under Network Summary in the main menu, I can see the LAN indicators for the default gateway, IP, or management interface. Here, I can check the intranet indicator to see if the public DNS 8.8.8.8 is within range. The wireless indicators check the wireless connectivity by looping through all access points within the networks. Both the networks A and B are enabled. If a network is down in any of the APs, the wireless status is considered to be down. Otherwise, the wireless indicator is operational. I'll click Clients Available under the monitoring menu. To troubleshoot the connection issue with the wireless client, I can check the logging level for notifications and the logs in the primary AP under Management and Logging section. Next, in the Monitoring menu, I'll click Clients to check the details. Once the client is visible, I can see the different parameters for that client, such as signal strength, connection speed, client types, MAC address, connected WLANs, and the duration of the connection. I can click on this client to troubleshoot any connectivity issues. If I scroll down this client view page, then I'll be able to see the ping test option. Click Start to check the latency and reachability between the primary AP and the client. This displays the latency. You can see that the client is reachable with a 5 out of 5 attempt success rate. In the Connection tab, I can perform a connection test. I may choose to perform a connection test when the client fails to connect to a particular WLAN. This test takes about three minutes. I'll attempt to connect during the three minute test while it generates diagnostic information to help in the troubleshooting. I'll click Start to enable the client debugging. I'll click OK and wait for three minutes. Then I'll click Stop to get the client test diagnostics. Now the event log testing contains the timestamp and message details that are exchanged between the client and the access point. The message type helps to analyze and conclude if a client is able to successfully join a WLAN. 
I'll click on Start to start the process, and then I can stop it and save the report to a local system. I'll click OK to save the report to a local system. Now I'll click on Access Points Available under Monitoring to see the troubleshooting options available. I can select any of the access points. In this case, I'll select this mesh extender and see what the troubleshooting options are. Here, I can see the access point parameters. I'll scroll down the page to check if the tech support option is available. I can start the process to get the tech support bundle. I'll click OK and the tech support status is showing in progress. Once the status is completed, I'll click on Download to get the tech support file. I can save that file. This is a compressed file, so I'll need to extract that file to see the details. I'll click OK to save the file. Using any zip application, I can open the compressed file to check the details within this troubleshooting file. On this access point page, I can see the client's options. If any client is associated with that access point, then it will be displayed here. Under this mesh extender, it's not showing. But I can see that under any other access point, it will be visible. So I can see that on this AP, one client is associated here. The RF troubleshooting option displays a visual graphical representation of the parameters that can affect the access point's radio performance. Spectrum Intelligence by default is visible in order to reduce the CPU cycles and increase the performance of the Cisco Business Wireless. I can enable Spectrum Intelligence from the Advanced RF Optimizing Parameter. Under Tools, I can enable or disable AP LED, Blink LED, import or export the config or transfer the firmware or image. The Restart AP and Factory Default options are not available on the primary AP. I can verify that by going to the access point, where I can see that this is a master primary AP. So I'll click on that. And under Tools, I can see that the Restart and Reboot options are reset, and the Reboot option is not available. I can reboot or reset the access point using those two options. Next, I'll navigate to the Advanced menu to see RF Optimization menu and check the RF Optimization parameters. I'll move that slide bar to the right to enable the RF optimization. To maximize the Wi-Fi network performance, I can optimize the RF signals coverage and quality. Now I can see that the RF automation client density is showing as low. By default, the medium client density-based RF setting is applied. Now we can see the traffic type applicable here. From the dropdown, I can see traffic type, either data or voice and data, so I'll keep this as data. Using the expert view, I can see more parameters and I can click on switch to expert view and navigate to the expert view. Here I can see the various parameters which influence the Cisco Business Wireless network performance, such as the 2.4 GHz optimized roaming and 5 GHz optimized roaming. To enable the 2.4 GHz optimized roaming and 5 GHz optimized roaming, I need to move the slide bar to the right. Optimized roaming resolves the problems of the sticky clients associated with access points that are located far away and outbound clients that attempt to connect to a Wi-Fi network without a stable connection. Optimized roaming allows a client to disassociate based on the RSSI of the client data packets and data rate. Optimized roaming also prevents a client association when the client's RSSI is low by checking the incoming client's RSSI against the RSSI threshold. Thus, if any wireless client is facing a connectivity issue, I can check the spam filters on the Cisco Business Wireless. I can see the 2.4 and 5 GHz intervals. The interval range is between 5 to 90 seconds. 90 is the default value. If I configure a low reporting interval, the network can be overloaded with coverage report messages. If the interval is set to a value other than the 90 seconds, then the client statistics will be sent only during the failure cases. I can see that 2.4 GHz threshold and 5 GHz threshold options are currently set as disable. However, I can set the default parameter from the dropdown for 2.4 and 5 GHz. 
The client will get disassociated if the current data rate of the client is lower than the optimized roaming data rate threshold. So I'll keep that as disable for now. So if any of the threshold is defined, the client is not able to reach it. I can see the event-driven RRM, Radio Resource Management, which is currently enabled. This toggle allows an AP in distress to bypass normal radio resource management intervals and immediately change the channel. This is a global setting and can be enabled or disabled. For this event-driven RRM, I can move the slide bar to enable. Now the interfere detection is currently disabled. I can move the slide bar to enable that. This is a global setting which enables the primary AP to detect the non-Wi-Fi sources by default, it's disabled, so I'll keep it as disabled. The 5 GHz channel width is currently set as 20 MHz. I can select the different channel bandwidth from the drop-down menu. The channel bandwidth option controls how broad the signal is for transferring data, such as 20 MHz, 40 MHz, 80 MHz, or best. By increasing the channel bandwidth, I can increase the speed and throughput of a wireless broadcast. This global setting is set to best by default, so I'll keep that. Then I can see that 2.4 and 5 GHz data rates option are currently set at a lower density for both 2.4 and 5 GHz networks. If I increase that, then the legacy devices will not be able to connect. If I move it to 12 UPS, then 802.11b devices are not supported. Same is for 5 GHz network. If I enable or enhance that value, then some legacy devices are not supported. So I need to check this parameter if a legacy device or a legacy client is not able to associate it to our wireless network, that whether these parameters are enabled on 2.4 or 5 GHz networks or not. Then, the final parameter on these pages selects DCA channels. This is the child dynamic channel assignment. I can select or click individual channels to be included in DCA for 2.4 and 5 GHz band. A green underline below the channel number indicates that it's selected. I can click on that to unselect it. Once I finalize the configuration, then I can click apply to save the settings. It will show a notification on the screen, and I'll click Yes to continue. On the Primary AP Tools page, available under the Advanced menu, I can see the Primary AP Troubleshooting Tools. By clicking on Restrict Primary AP, I can restart the Primary AP. If I'm still facing any issues, then I need to reboot. I can perform it from here, or the Configuration Management tab. I can either download or upload the configuration via HTTP, SFTP, or FTP, or TFTP method. And I can see the Restore to Factory Default Settings. If I need to bring our access point to the default settings, I can click Reset to Factory Default Settings and bring that to the default configuration. Under the Troubleshooting File tab, I can download the tech support. I did that initially from the access point menu. So from here also, I can download the tech support bundle. And by the FTP method and HTTP method, I can select the transfer mode and click on apply settings. Under the troubleshooting tools, I can see the various options available, like SSH v2 access. By default, this SSH is visible. For all APs connected to the Cisco Business Wireless Network, SSH can be enabled by the Cisco Technical Support Team for debugging process. Now the DNS servers is showing the Cisco umbrella and probably DNS like 8.8.8.8. I can choose that DNS server. From the dropdown, I can choose either umbrella or I can specify any new DNS server. I need to enter the DNS server follow-up. If I want to use a specific DNS server for our network or device, I then can apply that here. 
Then I can use the ping test tool to check the reachability of a client or any domain. Here, I can ping any IP. This is a public DNS IP that I can ping. I can click Start, and I can see the ping test result here. I can also check the DNS status. I can click Start to verify that Cisco.com is a valid one. DNS and its radius response tools operate like a simulation tool to verify if the primary AP can reach the radius server. It also verifies the username and password that are present in radius server. Next, I'll enter the user details and password and click Start to verify. To clear the parameters, click Clear. So that will clear the test parameters to default. Elementary, my dear Watson, I have solved the case and my wireless network is as good as new. It's time for this gumshoe to put down the magnifying glass and get back to work. Thanks for watching. <laughs>